Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back to our SPI board review. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Question 101. What is the direction of blood flow? A, left to right, B, right to left, C, superior to inferior, or D, unable to determine? The answer is D, unable to determine. This mode here is called power Doppler, and power Doppler does not give us the ability to see the direction of blood flow. Question 102. This artifact is the result of A, refraction, B, reflection, C, rectification, or D, rarefaction. The answer is B, reflection. This artifact is called a mirror artifact. Question 103. This artifact is the result of a, refraction, B, reflection, C, rectification, or D, rarefaction. The answer is A, refraction. So this artifact is called edge shadowing. What happens is the pulse comes down and hits an oblique surface with two different speeds on both sides of the media. So the speed will change, causing the pulse to change direction and refract. Question 104. Which of the following is the best way to reduce or eliminate this artifact? A, increase overall gain. B, apply spatial compounding. C, adjust the time gain compensation. Or D, increase output power. The answer is B, apply spatial compounding. This structure right here is causing a shadowing artifact because it's absorbing all the ultrasound. And what spatial compounding does is it steers the ultrasound in different directions so that we can kind of pick up areas underneath structures that are highly absorbent. Question 105. Using this type of energy mode is susceptible to what? A, reduce spatial resolution and aliasing. B, Reduce temporal resolution and flash artifacts. C, reduce lateral resolution and mirror Doppler artifacts. Or D, reduce contrast resolution and speed error artifacts. The answer is B, reduce temporal resolution and flash artifacts. Question 106, which of the following transducers will have the greatest Doppler shift? Transducer A, transducer B, transducer C, or transducer D? The answer is D. Transducer D will have the greatest Doppler shift. So the cosine of A will be zero. The cosine of B will be 0 0.5. And the cosine of D will give us one, which is the greatest Doppler shift. Question 107. Which of the following is known as the effects of the medium upon a sound wave? A, biological effects. B, acoustic propagation properties. C, mechanical index, or D, thermal index?
The answer is B, acoustic propagation properties. Question 108. Which of the following uses multiple ultrasound pulses to accurately determine red blood cell velocities by Doppler? A, fast Fourier transform or FFT. B, autocorrelation. C, ensemble length. Or D, pulse wave Doppler. The answer is ensemble length, also known as packet. Question 109. Which of the following has the most effect on color jet size? A. Pulse repetition frequency. B. Mechanical index. C. Output power. Or D. Color Doppler gain. The answer is D, color Doppler gain. So let's say that you're evaluating leaflet regurgitation in echocardiography, and you know that the regurgitation is bigger or more severe than it actually is showing on your screen. Let's say your color Doppler is only suggesting mild regurgitation, and your continuous wave Doppler is showing maybe moderate to severe. Just turn up your color Doppler gain, and that will help match what you're seeing with continuous wave Doppler. Question 110, sound travels A, in a vacuum, B, in a straight line, C, in a sine wave before traveling to tissue, or D, in the form of a transverse wave? The answer is in a straight line. So sound waves will actually travel in a straight line until it hits soft tissue. Once it starts traveling through soft tissue, it will start to bend. Question 111. During a Doppler examination, flows in an adjacent artery and vein are measured simultaneously. What will you hear in the right ear cup of your headphone? A, turbulent flow. B, parabolic flow, C, pulsatile flow, or D, venous flow? The answer is D, venous flow. Question 112. What is the name of the flat flow profile that is seen at the entrance of vessels? A, turbulent flow, B, parabolic flow, C, pulsatile flow, or D, plug flow? The answer is D, plug flow. To 113, which of the following is seen with continuous wave instrumentation? A, sample depth can be determined by a range gate. B, Transducer frequency matches that of the oscillator. C, very short pulses are used. Or D, aliasing limits velocity measurements. The answer is B, transducer frequency matches that of the oscillator. Question 114. Which of the following will not eliminate aliasing? A, increasing the frequency shift above the Nyquist limit. B, decreasing the sample depth. C, increasing the Nyquist limit above the frequency shift. Or D, increasing the PRF. Answer is A, increasing the frequency shift above the Nyquist limit. Question 115. When a reflector moves towards the transducer, 
what will happen to the reflected frequency? A, it will decrease. B, it will increase. C, will not change. Or D, need more information. The answer is B, increase. Anytime a reflector moves towards a transducer, you have a positive Doppler shift, and this will increase the reflected frequency. Question 116. Which of the following has to be increased in order to see an increase in the flow volume? A, pressure difference. B, resistance. C, vessel length. Or D, viscosity. The answer is pressure difference. Question 117. Adjusting which of the following will have no effect on the measured frequency shift? A, flow velocity, B, operating frequency, C, amplitude, or D, propagation speed? The answer is C, amplitude. Question 118. What is the point at which Reynolds number predicts turbulence? A, 500, B, 1200, C, 2000, or D, 4000? The answer is C, 2000. Question 119. In an exercising patient, what is the response to peripheral resistance with arteriolar dilatation? A, the peripheral resistance increases. B, the peripheral resistance decreases. C, there is no change in peripheral resistance. Or D, peripheral resistance would decrease but only in the presence of disease. The answer is B, the peripheral resistance decreases. Question 120. This color scale map, A, shows color change up and down, B, shows blood moving away from the transducer on the left and blood moving towards the transducer on the right, C, demonstrates turbulent flow on the left and laminar flow on the right, or D, distinguishes laminar flow from turbulent flow. The answer is D, distinguishes laminar flow from turbulent flow. Question 121. This color scale map, A, shows magnitude and direction of blood flow, B, shows blood moving away from the transducer on top and blood moving towards the transducer on the bottom, C, demonstrates turbulent flow on the left and laminar flow on the right, or D, colors closer to the area of no Doppler shift indicate higher velocities. The answer is A, shows magnitude and direction of blood flow. Question 122. The green color represents A, turbulent flow towards the transducer, B, laminar flow away from the transducer, C, turbulent flow away from the transducer, or D, laminar flow towards the transducer. The answer is C, turbulent flow away from the transducer. Question 123, what is the arrow pointing to right here? A, laminar flow towards the transducer. B, 
turbulent flow away from the transducer, C, laminar flow away from the transducer, or D, turbulent flow towards the transducer. The answer is B, turbulent flow away from the transducer. Question 124, what is the arrow pointing to right here? A, aliasing, B, positive Doppler shift, C, parabolic flow, or D, variance? The answer is variance. Question 125. If line density increases from 5 lines to 10 lines, and the depth changes from 10 centimeters to 5 centimeters, what happens to temporal resolution? A. It increases. B. Decreases. C. Unaffected. Or D. No way to determine. The answer is unaffected. And even though your depth is halved, so it goes from 10 centimeters to 5 centimeters, your line density increased from 5 to 10. So they kind of cancel each other out and temporal resolution won't be affected. Question 126. This artifact is the result of A, high attenuating structures, B, low attenuating structures, C, 2D gain turned up too high, or D, broken crystal. The answer is low attenuating structures. So the pulse that comes down and travels through this anechoic area won't attenuate a whole lot. It's going to be stronger than usual. So that's what causes hyperechoic posterior enhancement. Well, this concludes our first SPI test. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you learned lots. Hopefully this is helpful throughout your program in all your classes. I just want to say I love and I thank you all for the wonderful feedback I've received. If you want me to write more questions and upload more videos, just let me know. You can email me at ultrasoundboardofview at gmail.com or you can personally text me at 435-922-1635 and I will get right back to work. So let me know how you feel and we'll go from there. I'm Jim with ultrasoundboardofview.com. Thank you so much for watching.